Ok. Good morning, Cedar Rapids! Hey, salutations. Uh, um, okay. Brothers, let us all unite! You would rather have us keep the internet than have peace in the world. Like, no, I gotta have my... I gotta have my internet. <laughs> Live, finally, at last, in front of an internet audience, it's the I'm Clifford Today Show. We're back. We're back, everybody. And hey, look, I'm wearing a hat. The reason why I'm wearing a hat, because we're talking about the K-Love Fan Awards, because every, every... Almost every other person in in that in that award show was wearing some sort of wide brim hat, and I thought that that trend had kind of died out for worship leaders and singers to be wearing these kinds of hats. I this is actually my own hat, and I used to wear it a lot. I haven't worn it in a long time. Not really sure why. Maybe I'm just over the style. I don't know. Let me know. Let me know what you guys think. I'm obviously not going to wear this all day because this was the only way that I could figure out the whole headphone situation and the hat. And uh, it's a little annoying that my headphones are slipping off. And uh, so this is not great. So I'm going to switch hats to something more easier. But I thought it would be something a little fun to do. But so anyways... We're back, everyone, to the I'm Clifford Today Show. I'm so sorry I've been missing in action, so and which is why, you know, I don't know how many to expect if there's going to be anyone in the chats. If you are watching right now, shout out, shout out in the chats, you know. Um, but, uh, yeah, so it's been a crazy few weeks. I, I gave a – I posted on YouTube – uh, last week that I unfortunately had to work on Saturday, which doesn't happen often, but it only happens if A, I'm sick, which I was sick earlier that week, and I had to make up for the day that I didn't work, or B, two, B2, um, we have a holiday on Monday, and so we have to make up for that day on Saturday, which is kind of silly but at least I get paid an extra day so that's cool so anyways I I had decided to postpone the show because I felt like the last time that I pre-recorded the show it just didn't it just didn't feel right and I didn't think that it you know went over very well I don't know if it was I don't know if it was my best episode I don't know but um so I decided, you know what, I'm not going to do that again. I'm going to try to not do that anymore. So I'm just going to postpone it to the next week and, you know, just kind of mess up the schedule. So I apologize. Hope it doesn't, uh, hope it doesn't confuse anyone too much. But you know what, we're here. So I I'm just glad to be back, you know. So we'll, we'll, uh, we'll see how today goes. We've got a lot to talk about. But first... Today, we are joined by just an old-fashioned love song by Paul Williams. Uh, kind of very underrated songwriter. He actually wrote a lot of the songs for The Muppets and, like, The Muppet Show and such. Um, but he's, he's known for other things. You guys might recognize him from the song Touch by Daft Punk. Uh, that's him singing on that, and he, uh, you know, kind of uh, composed a lot of the music on that song. It's an incredible song. Uh, anyways, so, oh yeah, music by John Bartman, johnbartman.com. I'm actually, I'm actually wanting to do a, a look into doing something different for the I'm Clifford Today show theme. Um, the only thing is, is that the, the song that I want to, use is copyrighted so i want to see 
there's anything that I can do, you know. I mean, copyright hasn't always stopped me in the past, but this is something that I would want to use for every episode, and so we'll see. I know you guys don't care, but um, yeah. Uh, also, merch. Always got merch in the description. Uh, I've actually, oh, I should have brought it up with me to, to show you guys. Um, I got a new batch of merch sent to me because I'm selling merch at Audio Feed Festival, uh, which is next weekend. But we're, we're going to, we'll talk about that in a little bit. But, uh, but if you guys want your own merch, there's a link in the description and uh, you can, you can get some cool stuff. Got some cool shirts, got some mugs, got some stickers and all that stuff with my name on it. I want to make some new merch though, make some new interesting different stuff. But uh yeah, so we'll, we're we're going to get to some housekeeping before we get to the Caleb fan awards and a couple other things that we got have to talk about. Also got a lot of music to review, so we're basically just going to assuming that I have enough time we're going to, it's just going to be a big, my humble opinion. Because I don't know how long I'm going to talk about the Kayla Fan Awards, but we'll see. But a little bit of housekeeping to do. First of all, there was, um, I, I, I have to address this, guys. There was a, there was a bit of a misunderstanding in the last episode. And I just wanted to be upfront about it and apologize um, in the last, my humble opinion, I gave a review for an album by an artist that I had just discovered and I mispronounced their name and, um, they reached out to me and, um, corrected me and I just want to say thank you for the correction. I am now going to take this time to educate myself to be to be better at pronouncing it um but uh he sent me a like an audio file uh, a voice recording so that i heard exactly how it's pronounced it's funny because like not only did i mispronounce it but i got it completely wrong the first time for some reason i was saying fella peste and there's no L in it. For some reason, I had written it down that way. But I did correct that uh, in the episode. But uh, even then, I, I didn't get it wrong one time. And so I just wanted to uh, set the record straight and correct it here on the show. I did correct it on Instagram. But for those of you who uh, missed out on that, which, by the way, you can follow me on Instagram. I'm Clifford today. And I'm setting the record straight right now. The correct way to pronounce their name is Fepeste. Fepeste. It kind of sounds like a like a pasta, sort of. Fepeste. Fepeste. And I don't remember. You know what? Maybe I'll just play his what he sent me, if that's okay. I hope he's okay with that. He didn't really give me any personal information. So let's... Uh, I'm going to play it for you guys real quick, assuming that I that it's still there. I don't know if those delete after a while. Here we go. Hey man, so uh, the correct pronunciation is Fapeste. Yeah, Fapeste. Um, <laughs> it's actually a uh, the name of an old Watashi Wa song, um, and it's a oh, made-up yeah. word. And I think you're the first stranger uh, who I've heard try to pronounce it so far. You know, I have friends that are like, how do you, how do you say it? <laughs> so um, it was it was awesome hearing you you give it a try. And I totally knew something like this was going to happen at some point. It's a, it's a dumb name. I mean, it has, it has sentimental meaning to me and um, all that. But, yeah, dude, thank you so much for the review and for the shout out. It means a whole lot. And, oh, I want to um, – hold on. <laughs> There, there's more to it, but I don't have to play that whole thing. But uh, yeah, thanks, man, for for the correction. And uh, 
I'm glad I it's we've all I've also we've become we've become friends and so that's uh that's really cool um so glad to make that connection I'm glad that what I do helps me make connections like this like yeah we get little I guess we get a little bit of drama with the whole Derek Webb thing, but I also get the chance to connect with really cool people. So I'm excited. To, uh, uh, it's, that's really cool for me. So uh, uh, one more housekeeping thing. We had a comment on our last episode. Uh, and so, uh, yeah, so if you, if you guys leave comments on the videos, I, I'm probably going to address it in the next show. So... Uh, just let that be an encouragement to you. Yeah, Mark Edward Murphy uh, commented because we were talking about the Instagram account uh, is blank a Christian band. And like, I th I guess I went on a little spiel about like what, what makes a Christian band, you know, what, what makes a band Christian and all that. And so Mark Edward uh, Murphy said, uh, commented, when I was younger, the term Christian music referred to not only the faith of the artists, but the purpose of their music. Simply put, a Christian artist was a Christian who sang for a ministry purpose, which for my youth was mainly evangelism, but not limited to uh, limited exclusively to it. I will also add that if there is Christian lyrical content, at this point I do think that Christian music has become a kind of genre of music, which is to some sounds odd as there is not one given style of music. Insert any joke about the increasingly samey sound of modern Christian pop. Uh, yeah, I would say that Christian music has kind of become its own genre. It's like, I don't even know, like pop, rock, whatever, uh, soft rock, sort of, I guess. Um,. So going back to my youth, I didn't consider a good many tooth and nail groups as Christian groups. To be fair, I don't think a good many of them did either. Now, ultimately, it doesn't matter to me as I listen to a spectrum, and there's a good many CCM artists that don't edify me at all, and the artists that spiritually edify me and produce good art I listen to shrug. Yeah, it's a, it's a complicated thing, and it's really hard to kind of define it. I mean, it would be easy to just be like everything that's in the CCM that that's that's Christian, you know. I I mean, you can safely say that, but there's a whole lot more to it that doesn't get included in the CCM industry. So, so I don't know. And you have all these different artists that are like, oh, we're Christians, but we're not a Christian band or whatever. Um, the way that I see it in terms of like the artists that I cover on this channel is do they claim to be a christian do they claim to have faith no matter what if they call their christian if if they call their content and music christian or not um i just like to cover it because um i'm interested in people who have faith and you know they they write music so so that's kind of how I, I handle it. And yeah, there's, there's a lot of gray area for sure. Um, but yeah, but thanks, man. Uh, thanks, Mark, for, for the comment on that. So that's all for the, the housekeeping for now. Not, not a whole lot. And also, we got, um, got a couple of things before we, we get on with the show. So our good friend Benjamin Daniel, who has, you know, he's appeared on the show. I, he was, he's been my first and only interview so far on the I'm, Cl I'm Clifford Today show. I want to change that. I want to try to get some more interviews someday. Um, and he was featured on my What is Audio Feed documentary. And so... And I've talked about his music a lot whenever he releases new music. Well, it turns out that Benjamin Daniel is working on a new album already, even though he just released one that was incredible, Home, Home Enough for Now. I highly recommend you guys check it out. But he's working on a, another LP. So, um, And the reason why I'm saying this is because he has started a, a funding campaign to help fund the album. It's on uh, Indiegogo. If you guys want to support him, um, I'd say go to his social media and there should be, uh, there should be links there. Uh, 
I'm going to I'm going to try to remember to put a link in the description for this video. I'm going to see let me try and put a link in the chat just in case people are are watching right now. Uh, there you go. There's yeah, and there it is. Yeah. It's a long it's a long link. I wish uh, there were ways to like I wish there was a like a shorter link, but anyways, there you go. So um uh, yeah, uh, I'm a I'm a big we're a big fan of Benjamin Daniel here on this channel. So if you want to go support him and support an independent artist, go do that. He's trying to raise seven thousand dollars, I think it was. So uh, yeah, we want good artists to make good music. So put your money where your mouth is, and uh, yeah, and then uh, next up, I wanted to address. Audio feed is just around the corner, which is crazy. It, I feel like it really crept up on on me, you know. Um, and I'm really excited about it. By the way, tickets are still available for audio feed if you're interested. It's from July 1st to July 4th. You can buy a ticket for the whole festival, festival, festival. But you can also uh, buy day passes like if you can only make it for certain days you could check it out there um there's a full lineup and everything got a lot of great artists john van jusen uh ronnie martin slash joy electric my epic becoming the archetype um so many so many of them just off the top of my head i've talked about it on the show before and uh i'm excited because it's I, I am going to be more involved in it, you know, than I, which is crazy. Like last year was my first time going and I had no idea that I was going to be involved the way that I am this year, just a year later. So I'm really excited. And for those of you who don't know, well, I guess I haven't updated you guys exactly. So I am going to be giving uh, live. In, I'm going to be live interviewing a couple artists at audio feed and uh it has been confirmed that i will be interviewing becoming the archetype which i'm really excited about and ronnie martin of joy electric and i'm really really excited about that because i'm a i'm a big joy electric fan you guys know that um i was a huge fan of ronnie martin's most recent album I mean, it made it on my top 10 albums of the year, not just for Christian music, but just overall is a great album. And so I'm I'm excited to finally meet him and to meet Becoming the Archetype and, and discussing it with them. I'm a little nervous. I've uh, I've never done an, a live interview in front of a, a whole audience. I mean, I've done my share of interviews. I, I used to do a podcast with Mitchell called Talk the Pulse, where I interviewed local artists and such. And, of course, I did I did the simple interviews, you know, the, the interviews that I did for the What is Audio Feed documentary. But that I feel like that's a little different because, like, I had a set list of questions for everyone and I feel like I'm going to be a little bit more specific with, with these artists at audio feed. And so, uh, I'm nervous about how that's going to turn out, you know, and I'm glad, I'm so happy that audio feed has put their faith in me to be able to do this. Uh, they were a big fan of my documentary, so I really appreciate that. So, uh, I'm excited. Um, yeah. And, uh, also, um, I'm going to be having my merch table there at audio feed. I'm going to be selling some shirts. I got a couple mugs. I'm also going to share some, uh, sell some short forest stuff. I still got some short forest merch. Um, cause I'm actually going to try to do, uh, an impromptu set, of short forest at audio feed, which reminds me, uh, that is something else that I wanted to quick chat about i guess uh i'm filling up the whole time here but uh but yeah really excited a lot that i'm doing at audio feed doing the interviews doing the merch table and doing the impromptu stage and i guess i'm probably also going to be 
getting some footage for audio feed. Uh, they kind of needed some help with the on the on the video side of things. So I'm it's it hasn't become it hasn't been official, but I'm gonna you know offer my services. Of course, I'm gonna be doing a lot of other things, so I'm not gonna be able to you know do that a lot. But uh, at least maybe for all the sets that I plan to see anyway. So, um, yeah, which that reminds me, I need to get one of those signs for my table that says like closed or, you know, briefly somewhere else. I'll be back, you know, something like that. Um, so, yeah, doing a lot this year. I don't I don't think it's going to be near as hectic as last year. Last year was a little hectic trying to, you know, go to all the interviews and go to all the sets that I wanted to see. Um, and it was kind of tiring. It was fun, though. I'm glad I did it, but I think this year is going to be a lot more chill. So that's what I'm excited for. I hope it's not going to be so hot. It's been really hot here in Illinois lately. So we'll see. I'm trying to think what else. Audio feed, audio feed, audio feed. Um not sure. I also wanted to share that I I did a show recently and it was the first show like a a performance, a musical performance kind of show. I did one recently and it was the first show that I'd done in a while. Uh and it was, you know, a Sherwood Forest thing. And you know, was a little nervous about it because you know, it's my first time. I I'm used to doing short forest music as a band, and uh, you know, short forest isn't a band anymore due to unfortunate circumstances. You know, a little bit of drama. You know, so which that's okay, I guess. Um, but I wanted to keep on doing short forest, and so I I did a little acoustic show with actually a couple of uh, audio feed alumni and people who are going to be there i uh was with kevin schlereth which um we talked about i mentioned his album uh, i reviewed his album and it was it's a great album and highly recommended it and he's you know part of the team that's running audio feed so uh, he was there and jacob goins was also there and they were both incredible and we played at uh, my buddy nick gundy's house it was a backyard house show kind of and uh, a lot of my friends showed up to support me, and that was really awesome. And I got to play some old Sherwood Forest songs. It was a little, it was a little bit of a shorter set, but uh, yeah, it just kind of broke the ice uh, concerning you know me getting out there and doing solo shows again. And so that was uh, that was pretty cool. And uh, like I said, I'm planning on doing the impromptu stage at audio feed doing some short force stuff but it'll be a little different because um for me short forest always has to have this full sound and so for that reason i'm going to be attempting to play with a backing track so um and that's just the way that i want to do it because that's the way that short force music should be heard in my opinion so we're going to see how that goes. I'm a little, again, I'm a little nervous about it to, to see how that turns out. But I think the impromptu stage at Audio Feed is a good place to uh, to practice that. So wish me luck. Again, people are, are more than welcome to, to come. If you're in the Illinois area, go to Audio Feed. Come, come to Audio Feed. It's going to be great. Um, okay, so that took a while to get through things. I guess we're not exactly right at the half hour mark, but we'll, uh, since we're going to get into the K-Love Fan Awards, we're just going to get into it anyways. So, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll do a break and then we'll, we'll get into K-Love Fan Awards. So, all right. Well, again, excited to see you all. It's good to be back. We're going to go into a little break. Again, I don't, I, I didn't take the time to, uh, to remake the countdown video that I had for the mid break. So, but I do have the song, so I will play the song for you guys. So you're not completely, you know, bored or anything. So, so yeah, 
I'll, I promise I'll have the countdown video for next time. It's just, I'm so busy. <laughs> All right, don't go away. We'll be right back. After these messages, we'll be right back. All right, let's bring it back now, y'all. Like I said, I, I I promise I'll have the countdown for next time. Make things flow a little easier, you know. So, anyways, so the K-Love Fan Awards happened three weeks ago. I know that it's old news at this point, but this was all I had to talk about. <laughs> so this is what we're going with. <laughs> Ugh. Oh man. I coughed and then I hiccuped right after. That is the worst thing uh, imaginable. Um, so yeah, I know it's old news, but you know, I think that there are some things worth talking about, you know, I, I'll be honest. I don't really care for any 
fan awards or any kind of award ceremony. Honestly, the Oscars have they're dead. You know, they've they've passed the point of of when they're they were interesting and they're not anymore aside from people slapping each other on the stage am i right um but uh that's not going to happen again and so i think that that's just the i think will smith slapping chris rock was like the is the shot heard around the world and it was the sign that maybe these award shows are just dead maybe we should just stop trying you know so so that's how I feel about most fan awards and Kayla fan awards aren't really, I'm going to be honest. I've never watched the Kayla fan awards, but I heard a little bit of buzz around it this year from, you know, people being upset about a couple things. So I thought, well, maybe it's worth checking out just to talk about it on the show. And I don't know, maybe I'm wasting my time <laughs> because there's not a whole lot, but I guess, uh, I guess it's interesting to share my opinions about like what happened at the award ceremony and who won what and just my personal opinion because the thing is I don't care about K-Love. K we don't have K-Love over here but I have lived in places where where we did get K-Love. And well I guess you could probably listen to K-Love online, listen to it anywhere, but K-Love is just the amalgamation of everything wrong with uh, Christian music radio. So so if I don't care about that, why would I care about the radio? I don't know, but I'm going to talk about it anyways. Um, so, yeah. Um, K-Love Fan Awards opened up with... Uh, I I'm just going to kind of go through the events of what happened here and just share my thoughts on it so firstly we got justin bieber i'm sorry colton dixon and gabby barrett if i'm not as i'm not really that familiar with and they sang build a boat and that song was huge for some reason a uh, big song from colton dixon a lot of people loved it and i really don't see the appeal I think it's just kind of bland and unremarkable. So I really could care care less. Sorry, I'm burping and hiccuping. So I really could have cared less. I mean, it was kind of a boring performance. Uh, but, you know, this is kind of the theme throughout this award show with a few highlights. And then uh, Kane, the band Kane, I guess, were the, I don't know if you would call them the, I guess they were the main hosts because they came out at multiple times more than everyone else. And the thing is that I've I've never really cared for Kane a whole lot at all. I think their music is kind of bland and kind of boring. And so nothing about their music stands out to me. And uh, they did this sort of like comedic song where they made fun of the Kayla Fan Awards, but it's not nearly as self-aware as it should be just being honest. And so it was a little cringy. It was sort of like some sort of Broadway kind of song. Um So yeah, uh it was uh it was a little cringy. They were trying to be funny and really the only joke that I found a little funny was Something about, like, if you want to make a hit song, then just uh, have Brandon Lake in it, <laughs> which is pretty true. And we're going to talk about more about Brandon Lake later because Brandon Lake has become big these days. Um, so, yeah. And then next we had uh, Mac Powell doing solo stuff. Don't really know why Third Day called it quits if Mac Powell's still doing stuff, but he did a song, New Creation, which uh, I could care less for this song. It's it's disappointing. It's disappointing. I don't know why I said it that weird. It's disappointing because I feel like Mac has the potential to create some interesting music. He's got an interesting voice. He could do, he could I feel like he could go a little more country. You know, and not diet country, not Christian country, you know, 
And when I say that, I mean like the kind of Christian country that we hear a lot on the radio. It's not real country. But like, I, I think he did that for a little while and then it never took off and then... He just decided to do go back to bland Christian music, and uh, that was a lot more successful, of course. But, but yeah, I feel like he has the potential to create some interesting music, but he's just not reaching it now. So, and uh, in the performance, it was like this: they had this like big church kind of set, and there were pews and everything. And uh, I think it was Jason Crab who was singing with him too. So. So the set was interesting. Other than that, wasn't really that special. Okay, next they they announced the male artist of the year. Of course, we got it. that has to be first. Male artist of the year is the most important. <laughs> I'm just making some people upset. So, uh, I don't have a list of all the nominees. It doesn't really matter. But Brandon Lake won male artist of the year. And here's the thing. I don't think Brandon Lake is bad. Of course, you know, he's affiliated with Elevation Worship. And, you know, I and many other people have my problems with Elevation Worship. But I try to make it more about the ministry and uh, the leadership. Namely, Stephen Furtick. I try to make it more about that than particular individuals in the church because, like, there may be some individuals who who are solid somehow. <laughs> they still go to Elevation Worship for some reason. But, you know, their, sal- their faith is between them and God and their salvation is between them and God. That you can tell, you can only tell whether someone is saved by their fruits, you know, or at least you can guess. So, so I'm not the, I'm not the kind of person who's automatically just against anyone at all who's affiliated with Elevation Worship. So, yeah, I don't really have that strong of feelings towards him. I just feel like, uh, Brandon Lake is a bit overrated. I'm just gonna say it. I don't think he's bad. I guess I like him more than most male artists in CCM. But I think the only reason that the only thing that makes him stand out is that like he's young, he's energetic, and he has it's fiery and he has long hair. You know? <laughs> um he's very charismatic, you know. But the thing is is that his music, his solo music is just elevation worship. That's all it really is. There's nothing different about there's no difference between his solo music and elevation worship's music. Um, you know, so like, what's so interesting about him being a solo artist when he doesn't seem to have a unique voice with his style? It's just kind of, it's just worship music, you know, even though Elevation Worship, I I did praise their one song, Bye Bye Babylon, and not every one of their songs is bad, but yeah. But uh, honestly, looking at the whole list, I, I I don't even know who I would have chosen instead. I think I think a lot of guys on that list were just kind of uninteresting. Maybe Toby Mac, but then like he's Toby Mac, so he's probably won Male Artist of the Year like a dozen times. I just I think Toby Mac has the potential to make more interesting music. Not every one of his songs is a hit. Some of them are misses. But, uh, yeah. So, anyways, congratulations to Brandon Lake, Male Artist of the Year. But, again, speaking of that, I know, and I know I was just talking about, you know, not coming out against people who were, you know, just because they're affiliated with Elevation. But Brandon Lake said some said something interesting in his acceptance speech. He He quoted a verse, and... It's, uh, he, he quoted Ephesians 3.20, and I just don't know how I feel about his version of it, the Brandon Lake version, the BLV, (laughs) because he changes it a little bit. So I gotta, uh, we're going to play a clip and we're going to, 
take a listen to to what he said here at his at the Kayla Fan Awards. But I just want to say, man, um, to all the younger Brandons out there, my life verse is Ephesians 3.20. God is able to do exceedingly, abundantly more than you ever could think or imagine according to the power that he's placed inside of you. Son, daughter, you have power inside of you. He doesn't want to just make your dreams come true. He wants to exceed them. I'm living in that Ephesians 3.20 reality. Thank you. See, okay. There's a little bit to unpack there. I, one of the problems that I have with Stephen Furtick and his preaching is that he, he makes, he puts a lot of emphasis on like the power that we have inside of us, you know, the power that God gives us. And I, I, it obviously has rubbed off a lot on Brandon Lake, which in a sense, it's kind of true. We all have the Holy Spirit in us, and the Holy Spirit is working within us, changing us, convicting us. And, you know, if you're a charismatic by, uh, like myself, you know, you believe that the Holy Spirit empowers us to do, to do certain things, you know, within the will of, of God, of course. But here's the thing. Is that here's, here's the actual scripture verse. And I wanted to compare like the way that he says it. And I know this is this is ESV. I don't really know if he's reading quoting from a particular version, but in fact, it's um two verses. A whole the whole sentence is two verses. Ephesians three twenty through twenty one. <clears throat> now to him who is able to do far more abundantly than all that we ask or think, according to the power at work within us. To him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever. Amen. Now, right off the bat, you can see that he kind of twisted the words a little bit. The scripture, the verse starts with, Now to him who is able to be far, to do far more abundantly than all we ask or think. You know, it's the beginning of a sentence, you know, and it's uh, like a closure for the letter to the Ephesians. And the way that he says it is, God is able to do far more abundantly than all we ask or think. So he's already changed it from now to him who is able to to God is able. He's already changing the wording of the scripture, which like, I mean, maybe he's just paraphrasing, but I don't know. It just feels a little weird. And he puts a lot of emphasis on, he says, according to the power, what actually, what does he say? I'm going to go back to the clip. I apologize. But I just want to say, man, um, to, to all, all the younger, younger Brandons, Brandons out there, there my, my life verse is Ephesians 3.20. God is able to do exceedingly, abundantly more than you ever could think or imagine according to the power that he's placed inside of you. According to the power that he's placed inside of you. And the ESV says, according to the, to the power at work within us. <laughs> now, I think that... I'm not a Mike Winger. I'd love for Mike Winger to address this, you know, to really dissect the scripture. I'm just voicing my problems that I have with it. Like the verse says, according to the power at work within us. And he says, Brandon says, according to the power that he's placed inside of you. Now that's technically not wrong, but the way the things that he says after and the way that he words it, he, it seems like he's, he's putting a lot of emphasis on power and kind of makes it seem like that he's more thinking about it in terms of like what we can do with this power that's in us. There's so many things that we can do. And I don't really think that that's what the scripture is talking about. I think it's more talking about the the power at work within us, the power of God that is working within us to change us and to change our hearts, to change our convictions to change the way that we live our lives. And Brandon seems to be kind of, kind of making it more of like a prosperity gospel kind of thing where it's like, this is all about the amazing things that God can do. I mean, he is literally saying like, look at me, all you other little Brandons out there, all you guys that were like me when I was young, look at me right now. I'm on the award show. And this is because, uh, like God did this. I mean, yeah, it's true that God 
did that for him. But I don't know. I just kind of have a problem with the way that he kind of worded that. And it just seemed like that he's saying, um, you know, like as long as you have faith in God, then he's going to do incredible things just like this, you know, which God can do incredible things. But uh, that's kind of it's kind of a case by case kind of thing when it's like, what kind of amazing things are you saying that if I have faith in God, that I'm going to be a big star like you? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if I, what I'm making saying is making sense, but uh, that's just kind of the little things that, that bothered me anyways. Uh, moving on. Mercy Me did a performance and uh, along with a bunch of other performances in the video, they got muted because of copyright, which is kind of funny. So I can't really say anything about that because I, I didn't hear it. I couldn't hear it. So I just skipped ahead. Not like I was going to miss anything because uh, I've seen Mercy Me live and they are boring. Like the dude just stays in one spot the whole time. At least from my experience, they, they got like a bunch. They had like a bunch of lights. I saw them at the Rock and Worship Road tour, and uh, I was just incredibly um, unimpressed. And so, can't say that I was probably. It was going to be that much different. Uh, so, so anyways, <coughs> moving on to female artist of the year, Lauren Daigle won. I mean, big surprise. I, and I'll say I haven't listened to Lauren Daigle's new album, and I haven't really heard much about it. I've heard little bits of the the singles, but here's the thing: is that Lauren Daigle is talented, but she also might be a little overrated. I know years ago I did a review of You Say, and I was a little bit more positive about it than I probably would be now. And of course, I. I have my problems, you know, there was a whole controversy about when she was, was it, was it a podcast and she just, she couldn't outright say that homosexuality was a sin. And so a lot of people have problems with that. I have problems with that. And she hasn't, as far as I know, she hasn't addressed it since. So yeah, um, I think Lauren Daigle has the potential to be a great artist. I mean, you know, a lot of people, including myself, have referred to her as like she's kind of the Christian Adele. But the thing is, is that Adele makes a lot more interesting music. And I feel like Lauren Daigle needs to get out of the contemporary Christian worship kind of sound and try, you know, get together with a producer or something that can help make her an interesting sounding album again i haven't listened to the new album so maybe it's different but i just didn't really get anything different from the little that i've heard sorry i got my big gallon of water <laughs> but uh yeah so anyways of course she's gonna win she's like the darling of christian music now um but I personally think that Ann Wilson should have won. I think that she, out of everyone in that list, she's the most interesting and has the most, has a fun personality. Um, so that would have been my preference. Also, uh, I have no idea what Lauren Daigle was wearing. Uh, oh man, maybe I can pull that up. Let me pull that up, Jamie. Uh, I know it's in the um, the thumbnail, but I just wanted to show it because, like, <clears throat> she had this whole like flowery kind of dress and this sort of hat on it, and she looked out of something like Alice in Wonderland, as you can tell from the <laughs> the little edit that I made in the in the thumbnail I'm just gonna show it here like look at that okay I'm not trying to be mean sorry Lauren if you're watching this or listening because Derek Webb you know he, he listens to my show so maybe Lauren Daigle does I'm just having a little fun she just kind of looks like a Mad Hatter you know 
I don't know. I guess she's just one of those fun and quirky artists. You know, us us artists, man, we're so weird and unpredictable. All right, anyways, Lauren Daigle, congratulations, female artist of the year. Then we got uh, Katie, Nicole, and Big Daddy Weave. They did a performance. It was another boring performance of another boring song. Uh, and then we got into some weird cat- award categories, excuse me, that I didn't know existed. And they have nothing to do with music. There's There was a Film Impact Award. And I don't know how if they just made this because of The Chosen. Because The Chosen won. The ch- more specifically, The Chosen Season 3 finale. Which is whatever. I mean, I've talked about my opinions of The Chosen. And I know there's been a lot more controversy revolving it. And I'm not really going to get into it now. But just... From my opinion, The Chosen is just its just fan fiction of the Bible. So if you like that, whatever. I don't think it's completely blasphemous. <laughs> it's just not my thing. And I watched three episodes of it, and I'm like, I don't... Hot take, I don't think it's a really well-made show. Maybe for a Christian show, but... Um, I mean, uh, I got a, a poll, uh, Kevin... Uh, say goodnight, Kevin. You know, I we should be... You know, comparing these to, like, actual shows, and I, I don't think it really holds up that well, but uh, whatever. They also had Podcast Impact and uh, Unashamed with uh, Phil and Jace Robertson, the Duck Dynasty guys. They got a podcast, apparently. I didn't know about it, but they won, which is, uh, from what I know, they're, like, more on the conservative side, so that's kind of cool that they would uh, win. I have no idea what they talk about on their podcast. Maybe I'll check it out. I don't know. I've never watched Duck Dynasty, so. But then again, maybe if it's awarded by K-Love Fan Awards, it's probably not good. (laughs) Anyways, we also had Book Impact. And uh, Phil Wickham won with On Our Knees. Didn't even know that it existed. So, but Phil Wickham's not bad. I like some of his, his music. Some of his music is actual worship music um and then we had the the weirdest category entry of them all sports impact sports at the k-love fan i thought this was about music like tv podcast book whatever i get it their entertainment their media whatever but sports well i guess sports is entertainment but that's just so weird i don't know why they have it but anyways this charlotte smith one she's apparently a a foot uh, basketball coach for a women's basketball team so whatever i don't know what you got to do to win that kind of award but just be a christian and in sports i guess anyway so after all those weird entries matthew west did a performance of my story my story your glory and uh, I gotta say, his performance, his his show was a lot more energetic than a lot uh, most of them. So it's kind of fun to watch. And there was also a point in the song where they kind of they kind of uh, took a break and brought a few people out to like share their their testimonies and their stories, you know, because that's that's the point. And it's kind of cool and touching, I guess. I'm I mean, assume I'm assuming it's genuine. But I gotta say something about this award show. It sometimes it kind of felt like that that it was trying to do their best to try to get you to cry, to like show you the next thing. Like, look, look at this. Does, isn't this sad? Isn't this so inspiring? Cry, cry now. And I know this is probably a weird thing to criticize, and I probably shouldn't. But I mean, as long as if it's genuine, then fine. But sometimes it just kind of seemed like they picked those things to be like, oh, this will be good on the award show that people are really going to cry about this. So whatever. Next, we had breakout single of the year. I don't know what that means exactly because there was an actual, there was a, there's a song of the year later. So I don't know what you have to do to be a breakout single of the year. 
maybe it really is just determined by like how popular it was, but I don't know. See, I'm already bored. I'm so bored. But breakout single of the year, I guess, was Perfectly Loved by Rachel Lampa. Couldn't have picked a more boring single. I I would have preferred, based on the nominations, I would have preferred Brighter Days by Blessing A4. A4. I don't really get why he's why he spells it that way, but whatever. I just think it's Brighter Days is a lot more interesting than Perfectly Loved. Just uh Yeah, Toby Max on it, but there's nothing there's really nothing special about it. So whatever. Then uh, Tasha Layton and John uh, Reddick did another performance. Once again, boring. Now this next one, this one was what really upset me. <laughs> Group of the Year. Mercy Me. Really? Really, guys? Kayla Fan Awards? You picked Mercy Me? Over for King and Country? Over... I don't even remember all the other ones. But We the Kingdom? You picked Mercy Me. They've been around for like 30 years. What have they done that's been so interesting as of late? I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Bart and everyone in the band. I love you guys love you if you're watching this. This is just going to be the joke of the show. It's like, hey, they may be watching. They may look up the video and <laughs> it's even though their name's not in the title. They're going to watch the show because they're in the tags. But anyways, really, Mercy Me. I We the Kingdom is much more interesting than, than Mercy Me. They make much more interesting music. And they're also newer and fresher. And so I thought that that's what everyone liked was the new, big, and fresh thing. <coughs> Not stale Mercy Me. I'm sorry. I'm being so mean. I need to be a better Christian. So anyways, that really kind of, you guys know how much I don't care about Mercy Me. So that kind of set me off a little bit. But it is the Kayla Fan Awards, so I don't really care, but maybe I do too much. Anyways, so um, Group of the Year, Mercy Me. Congratulations, I guess. Getting start, uh, uh, Jeremy Camp came out. He did a performance of Getting Started. I'm whatever on Jeremy Camp. Uh, I respect him as a person. I respect the fact that he was on the Elisa Childers podcast with John Cooper talking, speaking out against the deconstruction movement. But like his music has really never been anything special to me. I mean, he's always been up on the trends and such. And I think that's what continues to make him popular. But he's just no, no more special than like anyone else. So. But anyways, Jeremy Camp was Jeremy Camp doing his performance. He did fine. He's a good front man. Um, and he also had his daughters come out and sing for him. And so that was kind of cool. They're very talented. They're very good singers. Uh, it's just weird to think that Jeremy is a dad to two full-grown daughters. I think they're both 17 and 18. But still, like, you look at Jeremy Camp, and you think that, oh, he's got, like, a three-year-old or something. But, no, he's a full-on dad now. <laughs> he's a father to two teenagers. And, I don't know, it's not a big deal, but it kind of makes me feel old. So, that's why. Uh, Cody Carnes then did a performance, and that was muted because of copyright. So, don't really have anything to say about it. We the Kingdom with uh, performed with Ann Wilson. And it was one of the better performances, of course. I like We the Kingdom a lot better than most anyone at this show. A lot of energy and great stage presence, and it was just it was just fun. And I like I like We the Kingdom and Ann Wilson, so putting them together is you know a good idea. So yeah, uh, Blessing Offer also did a performance, and he was good. Um, I thought it was uh, this was another one of those things where they're like, oh, this is going to make you cry. But, you know, you can't really it's hard to make fun of this because they they had a couple of the kids from the uh, Covenant School from Nashville, Tennessee, that had the shooting. And so they had a couple of kids from there come on, be on stage with him and, and sing it. So so that was cool, you know, whatever. But uh, 
yeah, and that ended. And then uh, Rachel Lampa and Andrew Rip came up to do Perfectly Loved and Fill My Cup. Boring. <laughs> not, not, not really anything special there. Andrew Rip is a good singer. I will say that, but there's nothing really special about his music, really. Next up, Worship Song of the Year. And the winner was Gratitude by Brandon Lake because everyone loves Brandon Lake now. And it's a fine song. It's an actual worship song, so I will give it that. That's like the bare minimum kind of uh, compliment that I can give a modern worship song these days is that like it's an actual worship song. It's worshiping God. All the lyrics are honoring and addressed to God. It's not, it doesn't feel like one of those like narcissistic kind of all about me kind of worship songs. So I'll give it that. And it's a fine song. I probably would have picked uh, Matt Maher's The Lord's Prayer because that was one of the contenders, but maybe he didn't win because he's Catholic. <laughs> I don't know. <coughs> and then next up, we had the whole, the highlight of the show, honestly. They had a section where they, uh, where they honored Stephen Curtis Chapman which was really cool. They played like a few clips, but then they had a whole band come out and uh, they did a little medley of his, of some of his hits. And so they had, there was like uh, Matthew West, uh, Bart from Mercy Me and uh, Mac Powell. They all came out and did different renditions. There was a, uh, the great adventure, um, uh, I forget what the other song was. And then um, Dive. And then finally, Stephen Curtis Chapman himself came out and they did uh, his newer song, uh, Don't Lose Heart. It was Don't Lose Heart, right? Yeah, Don't Lose Heart. And, you know, of course, that metal, it's full of songs of actual good CCM songs. And so I can't complain there. And. Don't Lose Heart is a fine song. It's not one of his best, but I'd rather listen to that than mostly anything else. So that was fun. That was fun to see everyone get together and, uh, you know, give some appreciation to him and to have him finally come out. And man, he's he's getting there up up there in age. And it's kind of it's kind of weird. You know, it's always weird to see s some artists that, you know, from when they were young and now all of a sudden they're old. But I mean, hey, Steven. If you're watching this, you're looking good, though, but you're old, so, but keep it up. I mean, a lot of artists, sometimes they make some of their best stuff when they're old. I mean, look at Johnny Cash, uh, David Bowie, Black Star. Anyways, uh, and then after that, it was Lauren Daigle, and uh, it was kind of uh, I'm I'm gonna admit that it was kind of a forgettable forgettable performance. I think she tried to do something a little different because it was just someone playing the piano and her singing, and I think that was her being like, "Everyone's gonna have all the lights and everything, and I just want to do something more simpler." But it wasn't really that interesting beyond that, like. Adele could probably make that interesting, I think, but uh, Lauren Daigle didn't really. So anyways, finally, well, not finally, but uh, we got to we get to song of the year and song of the year was gratitude by Brandon Lake. Whatever, you know, it's interesting because this song, this song actually came out three years ago. It wasn't originally a Brandon Lake song. It was I think it was a Bethel song, but. But he wrote it, apparently, but now it's like his song. So because he released his own version, I guess it's his song. But it got song of the year. And uh, I don't know. I feel like I probably would have gone with uh, The Goodness uh, by Toby Mac or Don't Lose Heart. I don't love either one of those songs, but I, I just I don't know. I kind of like them a little more than Gratitude. Whatever. I could care less. And then uh, Brandon Lake did a performance of Gratitude, and that was muted too. And But from what I could tell, I, I skipped through it. It became like this whole 10-minute long worship session. Because you always got to have some worship time. You <laughs> worship. Sorry. <laughs> um, so after that, they finally got to Artist of the Year. And this was a surprise 
because they d these people didn't win any awards before this. They didn't win song or anything. They got nominated, but it was for King and Country. I mean, I guess that's why they didn't get nominated for Group of the Year. I don't, I don't know. I guess I, I would prefer for King and Country over Mercy Me anytime, but I don't know. I just found it interesting that like it just kind of came out of nowhere. Like, oh, I guess for King and Country. They didn't win anything else, so we'll give them Artist of the Year, I guess. I don't really have a lot to say. I think for King and Country are fine. They're a lot more talented with their production than most Christian artists, but they're still they're fine. <laughs> I've got nothing to say, really. Uh, it was what happened after this that... This was the little thing that some people online got a little upset about. And we're going to, we'll talk about it for a little bit. But uh, the Dallas Jenkins, the director for The Chosen, and a couple of the cast members. Now, I don't know. I don't, I didn't recognize which ones they were. I don't know who they played or what. I have their names. I don't remember which belonged to which name belonged to who, but it was George Xanthus. I hope I'm pronouncing these names right. And Abe Bueno Jalad. They came out to they were the ones who came out to award the artist of the year. And after for King and Country, they did they had like a pre recorded acceptance speech because they weren't in at, they weren't there. They had to go on tour. But then they cut back to the chosen people, and uh, I'll show a clip of it. But one of the guys says something before they turn it to Kane, who like closed out the whole thing with a with a song. But it was something that he said that got some people upset, and uh, we're gonna play that real quick. If you got air in your lungs, blood in your body, you are a child of God. So come on and sing, somebody! Welcome, Cain! Yeah, so <coughs> that's what got some people upset. If you've got air in your lungs, blood in your body, you are a child of God. Now, here's the thing. is something that I don't think everyone realizes what he said is literally a quote from the song that Cain was about to sing. It's literally a line from from the song. So, if you want to blame anyone, blame Cain. But I'll I'll show you guys with this clip. It's your best day, your worst day, some Tuesday, or your birthday. Every day's a good day. Now let me tell you why. If you got air in your lungs, you got blood in your body, you are a child. Yeah, so that's where it's from. Uh, I think there's a lot of people that just like want to be mad at uh, anything in involving the chosen. I try to be a little bit more balanced with it, but you know, I, I get it some of the times. And for those of you who probably don't get it, like what 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 is it about that line that's so wrong? Well, when you take it out of context. And I don't know what the intentions were of, of the you know of Cain or of the guys from the Chosen. I don't know if they realized what they were saying, <clears throat> but out of context, this line is kind of bad. Um, it's if you've got air in your lungs, blood in your body, you are a child of God. A lot of I think what a lot of people are upset about is, no, that is not true. Just because you are a person, just because you're alive, that doesn't make you a child of God. That makes you a creation of God. You are created in God's image. If that's what you're saying, then yeah, we all, we're all created in God's image, whether we're believers or not, whether we believe it or not. But when you're talking about being a child of God, I think most people assume that what you're talking about is being like, like a, being a Christian being saved you know that's you know you're a child of god if you're if you're saved having air in your lungs and blood in your body be, merely existing does not make you a child of god that's 
Uh, that's bordering on the lines of, that's at least bordering on the lines of universalism. We're not all children of God. We're not all saved. Uh, we have to accept God's grace. We have to accept the fact that we're sinners and, and accept the fact that Jesus died for our sins and that we, the only way that we can achieve righteousness is through him. So that's what makes you a child of God. And the thing about the song that they, that Cain sings is that it's, it's all about like being blessed or whatever. So, but I don't know what they're intending with that line. Maybe they could explain it further. I'm not going to, you know, I'm not witch hunting or anything. I'm just kind of expressing what a lot of people's concerns are. And I get it. But I just wanted to set the record straight that uh, it, if we're going to blame anyone, don't blame the chosen people. I mean, I don't know. Maybe, maybe, maybe they do actually believe that. I don't know what their faith is. But yeah, we'll we'll just blame Cain, which I'm perfectly okay with because Cain is kind of cringe. If you, I mean, you already watched. He's doing a little rap solo in there, and it's just weird. Their their whole vibe just gives me, um, worship leaders at a youth camp. I could even go as far as to say kids camp. That's just the whole vibe that they get off, give off where they're like, hey, everybody, let's get jumping. Woo. Yeah. It's um, yeah. And him just breaking down into a rap. I don't know if it's in the actual song, but it's kind of cringe. And this award ceremony just kind of proved that uh, I am not a Kane fan. So God bless him, though. God bless you, Kane. Uh, do your thing. So, so yeah, it's just kind of interesting how like that was the thing that got people upset, which I, I get it, but I was kind of expecting a little more, a little more controversy. Uh, looks like we need a little controversy. Isn't that the Eminem song? I was kind of expecting maybe Lauren Daigle to say something controversial, controversial, but she never did. So anyways, that's the Kayla Fan Awards, and I don't know. I just uh, the Kayla Fan Awards just does not represent Christian music well. It's it's all just the same old boring CCM music that that just gets played on the radio all the time. Of course, we're gonna ignore all the other independent artists that make better music, much more interesting, and somewhat some of them challenging music. But no, we want all the safe music. We we want the worship music, not even the good worship music, but we want Mercy Me, we want Lauren Daigle, we want Jeremy Camp, we want all the ones that everyone already loves. We're not going to give any, which I don't know, I think uh, I think the fan awards are uh, voter based, which that would explain a lot, but yeah, anyways, that was the Kayla fan awards. I was thinking maybe next time, uh, if I remembered that the Kayla Fan Awards was happening, that I would do some sort of live react or whatever. Um, I think that that would be interesting. Do like a special stream. I don't know if it would be an episode, like an actual official episode, but just like have a have it be a stream. Uh, anyways, so that was the Kayla Fan Awards, and. Uh, Felt like a waste of time for the most part. <coughs> Let me know what you guys thought about the Caleb Fan Awards. Did you did you like it? Did you were you actual fans of the the people and artists that won awards? Or I don't know. What do you think? Let me know in the comments below. Like, comment, and survive. Anyways. I think uh, I think that's about it. We're going to get into my humble opinion, which this is going to be a longer one because I was away for a long time. And even just this weekend, there was a whole lot of music that came out, at least music that I care about. So we're going to talk about it and it's going to be the rest of this episode, which is fine because we got we still got enough time. So. Um, we've been waiting for this. 
Drew Holcomb and the Neighbors came out with their their full album, Strangers No More. And uh, it's good. Uh, it's uh, it's very sentimental and good natured. Uh, it, you know, it's kind of your typical uh, Drew Holcomb Americana folk kind of folk rock kind of sound. And I'm gonna sneeze. Here come all the comments, uh, making fun of my sneeze. Uh, so yeah, um, Strangers No More is very good. It's a good Drew Holcomb album, and it's there's a lot of fun songs in it. I already liked a lot of the singles that preceded it, like um, Fly and uh, Find Your People. Uh, and yeah, it's very sentimental, and, and Drew, with a lot of, it, it's very positive with his lyricism. You can kind of tell that Drew is trying to show us a good way to live and how to get along with people. And that seems to be the, the theme of the album is just relationships and how that works and how we can benefit from that and how we can help one another. And uh, that kind of seems to be the whole theme of, of Strangers No More. It's about friendship. It's about family. Just like Star Wars. But uh, yeah, check out uh, Strangers No More by Drew Holcomb and the Neighbors. I'm on a road, pretty baby, and I don't know how to stop once I'm going. I'm a river and I'm... Next one I'm really excited about. Anne Berlin has come out with a new single. It's called Lacerate. And uh, and it is preceding their upcoming album, which I'm really excited about. Uh, or no, not album, EP. I wish they would do a full EP. I don't know why they're just releasing EPs. Come on, guys! Like we, you guys ghost us for so long. You 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 break up the band and then you get back together just to make EPs. But I guess I'll I'll take whatever I can get. But uh, Lacerate is probably their heaviest to date. It's very reminiscent of, which it's very, it's interesting because their, I think it was Silverline, their Silverline EP was kind of, kind of mellow, you know, more on the, more on their like 80s alternative influenced uh, Anne Berlin kind of vibe. But this one just like, it, it's almost like metal. It, it's very reminiscent of Never Take Friendship Personal era. Anne Berlin, you know, because that one had like, it's like the only album that has screams on it. Uh, but it's it's reminiscent of that, but it's very fresh and very like it's just a a wall of sound and and also they um they got it's not just Christian uh, Stephen Christian singing on it, but they got um their guitarist, uh their one of their guitarists singing like lead on it, so they're like trading off vocals, which is new and different i forget the guy's name but in fact it might be christian which would be which is funny <laughs> but uh yeah lacerate is just very visceral in energy and it almost doesn't sound like Anne Berlin at parts but but it does at the same time so i don't know it's gotten me really excited to check out what the rest of the ep is going to be like and so yeah if you're an Anne Berlin fan, you you might really love this. So go check out Lacerate by Anne Berlin. All right. Um, something, another release that I'm very excited about. Mike Maines and the Branches. They're a band that I that I'm a big fan of. And they've got a couple of new singles out uh preceding their upcoming album. I think it's coming out in September. And uh they got two two new tracks, uh We're Alive and Always My Forever. We're Alive is very uh typical Mike Maines and the Branches kind of pop rocky which I love. I love their sound. It's very, it's very upbeat. 
very summer like it's perfect for for the summertime and uh always my forever is a lot more uh chill and uh more uh, well i actually haven't been able to look at the lyrics but um i'm gonna guess that it's a romantic song but it could be christian i don't know but uh, We're Alive is, is very positive and upbeat, and they just got a great sound. And so uh, I'm, I'm a big fan of Mike Maines, and so I'm excited for their new album. So go check out their, their two new singles, We're Alive and Always My Forever. All right, so, and we already got a new single from Judah, a.k.a. Judah Lee, a.k.a. Judah from Judah and the Lion. And I know that Judah and the Lion came out with a new single. I haven't had a chance to really listen to it, but I've found lately that I've kind of been relating more to Judah's solo stuff than as Judah and the Lion stuff. Uh, I mean, maybe it has to do with the fact that it's a lot more that his solo stuff tends to be a lot more faith based than Judah and the Lion. So uh, and this is actually a collab with Ellie Holcomb. Speaking of Drew Holcomb, this is uh, Drew's wife, Ellie. And uh, so they're they're collabing on this. And it's uh, the song is called Kind of Wild. And it's about according to Judah's post on social media. It's about asking God where he is in each moment and allowing him to answer. So it's a lot about trust. It's about, you know, trusting in the answers that God can give. And um, yeah, and it's uh, I, I love the production on it. It's got a very good 80s uh, kind of influence on, on, you know, modern pop and, and folk. And it's really catchy, too, you know, so. Uh, and uh, Ellie Holcomb has a great uh, is a great addition to it. So I'm a big fan of this collab. So go check out "Kind of Wild" by Judah, featuring Ellie Holcomb. I also love the fact that he, the it's not a music video. It's just a visualizer, the official visualizer, but I do love the uh, reference and nod to uh, Jojo Rabbit in that video. I think it's, uh, I think that's cute. Um, got a couple more. I told you there was a lot. And this one I'm particularly excited about because Josh Gerrels is finally coming out with new music. You guys would know that I'm a huge Josh Gerrels fan. I've talked about him a lot on this channel even before the I'm Clifford Today show. And uh, he's finally got a brand new single out. And uh, I think there's going to be a whole album, I'm assuming. It's called All in All. And uh, according to his post on social media, it's about leaving all in order to receive all and the surrender that's required at the threshold of this mysterious exchange. The good news is that we receive more than we could have ever asked or imagined. Hint. It's Jesus. Um, and so, yeah, it's a it's a fun, it's a fun song. Very uh, it's got a little groove to it, but it's very, you know, it's classic Josh Gerald's kind of uh, folk, folky attitude to it. And Josh Gerald's just sounds as, as, you know, as good as ever. So uh, I'm stoked about this and I'm stoked for more music from Josh. So. Go check out All in All by Josh Gerrels. All right. Now, last but not least, we finally have the full album, full debut self-titled album from Telephone Friends. Now, I know I, I I don't know if any of you guys have gotten sick and tired of me talking about each single that they've they've released, but you know that's finally over <laughs> until they start releasing new music. But uh, they've yeah their new album is out and self-titled, 
And just to remind everyone, this is a new band formed by Tyson Matzenbacher and John Van Jusen, uh, plus other uh, musicians. And uh, it's this album is just a lot of fun. Um, talked about in the past with their singles that a lot of them have a have a very humorous side to them. So they show the, the humorous side to life. But that doesn't mean it, they don't have a few tracks that are a bit more on the on the serious side. So there's a lot of humor. There's a lot of deepness. But is deepness a word? I don't I don't care. But um, all in all, it's just a really fun album. Uh, and it's it's not all it, it's got some dynamics. It's got its upbeat, fast songs, but it's uh, also got it's, you know, very, uh, very serious songs, you know, but it's mostly all just fun. That's all. That's all I can really say. It's just fun. Very reminiscent of like Reliant K with their more with their later sound. And, uh, you know, Reliant K was always kind of a band that uh, knew how to have fun, you know, so kind of just it kind of reminds me of that. So <coughs> I'm glad it's out. I've, I've really been enjoying it. Uh, it's finally out. I'm so sorry. I'm so gross on this episode. But uh, go check out Telephone Friends' uh, self-titled album, Wherever Music is Sold. You and I were no different. You and I, I need to make some money. All right. And uh, that is it. That is all for our, uh, for my humble opinion. Um, so... Yay. That was a lot. I thought it would take longer, but I kind of sped through that. So, so we're getting to the end of the show. Um, in a couple weeks, I'll be back. Um, and, uh, I'll be back from audio feed. So that's what uh, the next episode will be about. I'll talk about my experience at audio feed I know I, I talked about doing an Anne Berlin tier list thing, and it was mostly because of their new single, new music coming out. But uh, that might, we'll have to postpone that for later. Maybe, so probably not the next episode, but the next episode we'll talk about Anne Berlin. Unless something crazy happens that I have to talk about, you know, so. But uh, I'm really excited about audio feed. Uh, appreciate you guys uh, prayers for that. Um, I'm excited. So, um, I'll get to talk about that in the next episode. Whew. And it's been, it's been a busy couple of weeks, but I'm glad to be back. This was, uh, this is great to be back. So thank you guys so much. I, I figured that, you know, since it's been a while, not only has it been a while since I did, since you know the I'm Clifford today shows last episode, but all last week I uh, all this week I didn't do any stronghold streams, just because of reasons either busy or just too tired, had too much going on. So I apologize, and I understand why there's not really anyone here right now. But uh, hopefully you guys will watch this later. Like I said, leave leave a comment in the video. Tell me what you guys uh, thought what you felt about this episode. Um, yeah, I think, uh, oh shoot. I hope I didn't have an echo during those, uh, song segments, but whatever too late. Now it is now time to close this episode. Finally. <laughs> so, be sure to subscribe and like the video if you liked what you saw or what you heard. If you're listening on Apple Podcasts, you can uh, leave a rating and review. We'll give you a shout out on the show. If you're on Spotify, you can leave a, a rating. Can't do reviews, but oh, also if you're listening on Spotify, uh, there's usually always a question at the at the on the ep episode page where you can. Uh, Tell me what you thought about the episode. And, uh, yeah, and uh, Podwood Forecast, my other podcast that I have with my friend Mitchell. Be sure to check that out on other platforms. 
We're actually planning on recording a new episode. We're going to be talking about a couple of superhero movies that came out recently. So uh, maybe you'll be interested to check that out. Uh, yeah, merch. Merch in the links, in the description, whatever. Uh, still working on the John James documentary. I'm getting a little bit more men momentum in that, so that's really cool. But uh, yeah, I'll see you guys in the next episode in a couple of weeks. And I'll see you on the Stronghold stream uh, next week, so go check those out. All right. You guys have a great one. Bye.